Bonjour à tous, je m'appelle Philippe Ossil, je travaille à Salesforce, je suis développeur évangéliste. Alors en quoi ça consiste d'être développeur évangéliste Ça consiste à travailler avec les développeurs de la communauté Salesforce en fait. Et mon travail consiste grosso modo à apporter les bonnes pratiques en termes de développement autour de la plateforme Lightning, Apex et d'autres fonctionnalités de, la, de, de, de Salesforce. Aujourd'hui je vais vous parler en fait d'un concept d'architecture Lightning, ça s'appelle les service components, les composants de type service. Oh, sorry, in English. Yes, very sorry. Let's me, let me do it again. I've been talking French all day long, so sorry. Let, let me, I'll do it in English, no worries. So, my name is Philippe Ozil. I'm a developer of engines at Salesforce, and I'm glad to be here today to talk to you about service architecture for Lightning Components. I'm going to talk about uh, a lot of developer-related developer uh, content. But before I do that, I am, because I work for Salesforce, I have to give you this forward-looking statement. Do not make your purchasing decision based on what I'm going to tell you. Do make your purchasing decisions based on what is available in the product. The good news is that everything that I'm going to talk about is part of the product already. There are no uh, features that are not released yet, so you should be safe. I'm going to start about talking about what is a Lightning Service Component, what, what, what qualifies as a Service Component. And I'm going to present you a couple of base service components. Are you already using them somehow? And I will conclude about with how you can build your own. So I'll give you some tips and tricks about uh, how you can create your own components. And I'll also share two service components that I've built and I've used across several projects. So let's start first with what is a service component. So a service component is something, of course, that provides a service. It acts actually as an API. So think about something like um, triggering notifications, uh, displaying pop-ups, uh, maybe um, sending out events to external systems. These are services. And so the idea is that you have a component which provides something that is generic and reusable. It can be used in different contexts. You can configure it, and you can reuse it across multiple pages. Now, with Lightning, there's also another constraint with that, is that the service is actually non-graphical, in the sense that it is a Lightning component, there is a markup, but we do not use the markup. When you add this component, there is no UI on, of the component. We are just using uh, features that are accessed, accessed with methods. So this is a, a rather particular type of component. It's a, actually a, a quick way to share functionalities across multiple components. When you put the component in, no UI, but then you can later call functions to expose UI. This is going to get even clearer when I get uh, to examples. So let me start by talking about base service components. So the notion of service component is not something you'll find in documentation so far because we've been using different terms to call them. They all follow the same rules, and there are actually quite a few of them. As of winter 19, there are about 20 uh, or so uh, service components that are available in the product. You may have heard about mostly the UI ones, the ones that actually deal with the user interface. The most famous one is probably Notification Library, which allows you to bring up toast notifications, for example, or uh, pop-ups. And there's the overlay library, which allows you to create custom modal uh, dialogues. Workspace API, which allows you to, for example, to interact with tabs when you're in a console environment. And then there's also utility bar for, of course, the utility bar, et cetera, et cetera. You can see the, the idea. So these are the ones that are used across the Lightning platform. But then you also have another one, which is also very, very important. And that's probably the first one uh, in terms of service component. That's the Lightning Data Service. Lightning Data Services allows you to interact with Salesforce data without having to write code in Apex. So that's probably the, the most uh, important service of all, because that was the first one. It was one which brought in this kind of architecture. And if you remember, when you use the Lightning service, uh, the Lightning Data Service, you don't have any user interface. It's only to deal with data. So that's the idea behind services. Now, we, the la latest one that we added to the collection of services is the EMP API. Uh, this was added in Winter 19. And this is uh, the latest uh, functionality that allows you to interact with streaming APIs. So for example, if you want to receive platform events, if you want to receive streaming API, uh, generic messages, push topics, or even change data capture, you have this new uh, service component called the MP API, which allows you to subscribe to those events and get notifications in real time. Uh, I recently wrote a blog about this, so I thought I could mention it. Then you got also some uh, cloud-specific, I would say, uh, services like Wave or Service Cloud. I'm, I'm not going to go too much in details on those, but you can see that we're using a lot of these services. But the thing is, we don't necessarily call them services. Some of them are called libraries, other, other are called APIs, or even SDK for Wave, for example. But what I'm calling a service component, it's actually the same definition that applies to all of this. 
So I think it's good that we have a talk and we actually rationalize a bit this pattern. Now I'm going to give you an example of, of the use of one of these services. I'm going to take something very basic so that we don't take too much time of it. I'm going to talk about the notification library. When you add a notification library, you can create something like this little pop-up with a message text. How do you use that? And you'll see that actually the service components are all used in the kind of same way. So let's take a look now at the code. When you use this service, the first thing you want to do is actually add the, um, the components, which is like the service component, to your markup. So here we have a lightning notification library tag here that we add in our markup. And you notice that there is also an aura ID that we have set next to it. Then we have a, another button under it, just to call it. And this button calls a function in our controller called handle show notice. And this below is the JavaScript code that is associated to this button. I'm going to just use it as a demo to show how you can interact with the service. Then if you want to call the service, you just need to do a component.find, use the ORID reference in, in the find uh, parameter, and then call one of the different ORA methods that the service exposes. So here we're using an ORA method called show notice. And then there's a big batch of parameters which gives you the rendering I, I just gave you in the previous screenshot. So basically it's an error type, so background is red. Uh, there's a header, there's a message, and you can even have a callback function which allows you to react to when you use a click on cancel or close, for example. So this is really the fundamental idea behind services. They're using our methods to expose features, and you can access them by placing them first in the markup, using an ORID to identify them in a unique manner, and then do component then find to access the, comp the components, the service component, and then call one of the different methods from on it. So here I showed show notice, but there are other uh, or a methods that are exposed that allow you to do different things, like showing toast notification, for example. This was just a mobile dialog, but you can have other notifications types. So now that, we, now that we've seen uh, base service component, let's talk more about how you can create your own and what are the good scenarios, what are the best practices to create your own service components. The first thing you want to ask yourself is actually how can I identify a good candidate for a service component? And the question is, of course, can it be reused? Is it, does it make sense to bundle uh, this particular bit of code, extract it, and put it aside so that it can be used in multiple contexts? So the thing is, it, it needs to be generic enough. It needs to simplify uh, the code of your current components, because generally you don't want to uh, over-engineer uh, a solution. And then it should also help you to avoid code duplication. If you're copy-pasting over and again the same bit of code, that's probably a good fit for a service component. I'm talking mostly about JavaScript code because we are talking about dynamic aspects of services. And let me show you an example. You probably all have seen this bit of code. I don't ask you to read about, the, about it really, but we all have used this bit of code and we all have copied it over and over and over again. This is taken from the uh, Lightning documentation. This is the, the pattern that is in the official documentation about how you can call uh, an Apex method from uh, Lightning, a server-side action. We all have copied this paste of copy paste this bit of code hundreds of times. But what is really interesting in this bit of code is actually what you do with the success callback when you have the response from the Apex controller. And what I'm not showing in this code, but this actually is a lot of work, is, is to write the proper error handling scenarios. So th these are tens of lines if you want to handle properly different errors that the server can bring, can get back. So I'm going to take an example to explain you the best practices and give, and give you a bit of context. I'm going to use this example of calling a server action uh, as a service, because I think it's a great match. It helps you to avoid hundreds of lines of code by just turning this into a couple of lines. So this is a contribution I make, and this is something you can actually rebuild yourself, but I think that's probably the most significant way of, of really seeing the advantages of using a service. Getting rid of hundreds of lines of code, unifying them, making them testable and uh, stable across your project. So let's see how it works before going into the code. So we have our calling component, the component that needs to call Apex. It is bound to our Apex controller. You know there's a controller equal and then my Apex controller. And the controller exposes uh, an, aura, uh, sorry, an Apex function with an or at aura enabled annotation. Our component has a controller and has some markup. Now what you do is you add the service component. Here it's called server action service. You place it in your component, and we're going to use later the call7 aura method to actually perform the call to our controller. 
What's important to note is that the server action service is not directly tied to the Apex controller. That's the calling component, which is tied to the Apex controller. So how does it work? The first thing you need to do in your controller when you want to call the Apex uh, controller is that you need to get a reference to the action. So my action here. You do a component get, and you get a reference to the action. Then you pass this reference to the call server method of your service. And the service will then execute the call to the uh, Apex. So it, gets, it calls the Apex, get the response back, handles the RF needed, and gets you out the result in a function that we have provided as a callback. So what is very interesting with this mechanism is that you save uh, hundreds of lines of code, and you don't tie your service to a particular controller. You can use the service with multiple Apex controllers, because it's not directly tied to the Apex part. Let's see this with code. So here I have been verbose, so I have about 10 lines of code, but in the end, it's actually less than that. You can compress it a bit. If you remember, we were talking about more than 100 lines of code. Now we get down to less than 10. So let's see. Here we have exactly the same thing as in our architecture diagram. We have the calling component, which is tied to my Apex controller. And below, you have some uh, JavaScript from the controller of the component. So we place the reference to our service with an ID, just like we did with notification library. And then in our uh, JavaScript controller, we get the reference to the server uh, action service component by using component.find with your ID. We also get a reference to the uh, Apex uh, function, my action, by calling component get c.myAction. Remember that the C here is the Apex controller. It's not the JavaScript controller. So we get the reference to the action, and then we just call one of the OR methods of our service. Here it's call server. And then we pass in the parameters. We pass in the reference to the Apex action that we want to call. So some parameters, if we want to have some parameters. So this is what's going to end on the uh, Apex side. We can enable cache or disable cache. And then we can process the, uh, the response, whether it is a success response or an error response. And there are additional flags that I haven't even detailed here that you can use to, for example, display automatically a toast notification when there is an error or to log the error in a console. All of that is done automatically by the service. You don't have to rewrite all of this code everywhere. So that's, I think, a very good use case for a service because you see 10 lines, and here I've, I've been really expanding it, but generally you can almost call it in one single line. So that's a really good use case for a service. Another good use case for a service is when you need to get values for a pick list. So that's a totally different example. But that's something we all do every day. Uh, we all, all often have like a pick list, and we need to figure out we, we'll need a drop down with pick list values. So how do you do that? Well, if you do it without a service, basically you would have to write the hundred lines of JavaScript code, JavaScript code, sorry, to call the Apex controller to get the different values, and then of course the Apex lines. Here I'm giving you an example with two different fields, and you notice that I'm overly I'm doing a naive approach. You could factor this a bit, make it more generic, but basically you're copy pasting kind of the same code. The only difference is the field type that you want to access. So here, for example, account type and account industry. So seven lines of code per field, multiplied by the number of fields. So that's kind of heavy to maintain. But if you use a service, implementations of services. With that, I'm going to be taking questions, and I would like to thank you for your attention. Any questions? Yep. If you use the service cloud components, um, can, those are only available if you have service cloud, is that right? Yes, yes, yes. I haven't used them, to be honest. But yes, they, they require the license because they use features from service cloud. Um, and then if you want to package those, like if you built like components around your those service cloud features and wanted to package them? So I guess the installation of the package would only work if the environment target environment supports uh, the right type of feature. Yes. So yeah, the idea behind the service is that you can share some JavaScript code. So you could basically take all your helpers and put them like in a service, for example. That could be a way to do it. Yes. Because the, the problem with the um, Lightning framework is that it doesn't allow you easily to share JavaScript across multiple components. There are a couple of ways to do that. One of this known is to use a static resource, but it's not so convenient. And using a service can allow you to do exactly that, sharing functions across multiple components.
questions? Okay, well, thank you very much, and I'll be around if you have any other questions. Thanks.